Hi everyone, my name is Andy Carley from School Outdoor Learning. You're watching Soul Interactive. This is the video channel that brings you free outdoor learning resources. So today's task is called Signal Strength and it is the perfect exercise for exploring communication, non-verbal cues, and it will really challenge your learners on a team level to be able to work collaboratively to send messages using semaphore and Morse code. So the way signal strength works is you're going to subdivide your group into two teams. One team is going to be at station A. Their job is to send using Morse code and to receive in semaphore. Obviously they're going to need a copy of the Morse and semaphore alphabet and the means to be able to write things down. Meanwhile, the other team will be located at station B also with a copy of the Morse and Semaphore alphabet and the means to be able to write stuff down. Their job is to send in Semaphore and to receive in Morse code. So this is a task that can easily fill 45 minutes to an hour. So we can't just send the two sub teams off to their respective stations and expect them to get this and start doing it straight away. So initially, they're going to need a period of time where they're together in one space, perhaps in the middle, um, and obviously what they need to do is practice the sending and receiving of Morse and Semaphore. They need to figure out who's going to do what within their sub-teams. And also they need to figure out their own language uh, around how they're going to start words, pauses between words, uh, and obviously what to do if something goes wrong and they need to start again. So all of that will take a little bit of time, uh, probably 30-40 minutes of kind of planning and organising. And then once that time has elapsed and the groups feel fairly happy that uh, they know what they're doing and they've got a good understanding between themselves, that's when they would head off to their two respective stations, A and B. And obviously from that moment on, there can be no verbal communication between them at all. The whole process happens in a non-verbal way and only using Morse and Semaphore and whatever other language, uh, non-verbal language they've generated for themselves because you're going to want at least 100, maybe 150 metres uh, of distance between these two teams and that's where the real challenge is. So the great thing about this exercise, it's all about communication. And communication, as we know, be it verbal or non-verbal, has to be really, really clear. So when sending Morse code, it's really, really important that we get distinctions between dots and dashes, dits and dars as they're sometimes referred to as. So as a guidance piece for your young learners, the best thing to tell them is that a dot would be just a simple flash like that. And a dash needs to be roughly four times longer. So then you get a clear distinction between your dots and your dashes. And then obviously there's gonna to have to be a pause uh, between words as well, so that they know that that's a word that's finished. So it depends on the type of torch that you're using. Uh, obviously keep it really, really simple. Here with this torch, we're using one that's actually got a strobe setting. So we're using that as a means of being able to draw attention, a bit like the waving of the flags with the semaphore. Um, and then because it's quite fiddly to actually keep pressing the button for dots and dashes on this one, we're actually suggesting that with it on permanently, you just use a piece of card or a piece of paper just to cover up the light to show the dots and the dashes, which is simpler. And another little trick the teams might be able to do is then also write down exactly what they're sending on that little piece of paper as well, uh, which makes the whole process quite a lot easier. And again, for the semaphore alphabet, uh, it's really important that everything is super crystal clear. A couple of conventions which is useful to share with your group. When you're standing by or doing nothing and you're just pausing, you normally hold the flags pointing downwards in a crossed configuration like this. When you want to start sending a message, what you normally do is you wave the flags like this or below like this to signal that you're about to start something and then go from this position. And again, it's really important that they're crystal clear with their arm movements. So it's a little bit like a clock, the different letters within semaphore. So that would be A, that would be B, that would be C, and that would be D. And again, it's really important that you have straight arms, clear movements, and it's really, really obvious which position each arm is being held in.
So signal strength and uh, the use of Morse and semaphore uh, provides loads and loads of layers of learning. At one level, uh, it's just a great team building exercise, a really good collaborative task that's going to bring alive lots and lots of communication challenges, but also collaborative planning and organizational challenges as well. You can also then start to talk about communication itself, nonverbal communication and verbal communication and have some great learnings around what makes communication clear, less clear, what are the barriers and blocks, etc. And if you want to go further, there's extra layers here in terms of the history. There's some fantastic history around using semaphore and morse, where they were originated, how they've been used over the ages long before we uh, entered a digital age. Uh, some great links to the French Revolution and how communication happened there. Ship to shore, ship to ship communications during both world wars when both of these mediums were being used. So lots and lots of really, really fantastic learning to be generated in and around the activity itself that can almost turn into a mini project rather than just a, uh, a team initiative task. As with all our films, there's now the opportunity to download the written resources that support the activity. Uh, we've got two versions for you. One uh, outlines how it can be used for curriculum-based teaching and learning, and then you've got a second one which can uh, illustrate how to use it as a team-building exercise for te uh, teaching for character. Uh, so download those. Please uh, like the film, click on the subscribe button, keep watching, and until next time, have fun.